Well, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Theron Peck. Uh, hopefully, some folks are out there. This is our first of many uh, webinars. We're going to be talking about uh, grass. And uh, my email is behind me. It's turf at chippersinc.com. Uh, so if you have any questions that I don't answer today or can't get to, please feel free to uh, email them uh, to me. And I'd be happy to uh, email you a response as well as your ability to send me uh, pictures. So we've got a bunch of, uh, bunch of questions uh, that were actually sent in, and I'm gonna go through them and answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, like I said, if I can't get to all of them, I will certainly answer them next uh, Thursday. And uh, please be gentle, this is my first webinar. And uh, I'm gonna have a little, hopefully have a little fun and uh, get you guys uh, educated on lawns. because There's been a lot of stuff going on. So with that, Let's start off with the first question. This is from uh, Allison, and this is a really common question. At what length should I cut my grass? Uh, I hear this question just about daily. So to answer that, I want to look, have, want to put up my mowing magnet card. I know you can't see it in, in its entirety, but it's, it's actually a magnet and it gives you the mowing a length. And so for the if you want one of these, please email me and uh, we'll be happy to send you one. They stick right on your mower. They're pretty cool. So a direct answer to that question is three inches. Uh, in the springtime is your first cut. You definitely want to start it off to clean the lawn off around an inch and a half. And that would be in uh, April or early May in most of our growing areas. Then starting in uh, mid-May to the end of May, you want to raise it up to three inches, even three and a half inches if you, if you can. I don't know how, depends on your mower uh, type. And during the summer, all the way into September, the end of September, do you want to keep it at three inches? And then in October and going into early November, you want to start to drop that uh, a notch a week so that you end up with an inch and a half as your final cut. Generally, that's going to be in uh, mid-November, depending on you know how the season goes, of course. So what's the reason for cutting it three inches? Well, not only does it root prune your plants, uh, if you cut it short, it actually shortens your root system. It also causes the soil to superheat. And when you get hot, hot soil, which we have right now, definitely, even with proper mowing, you'll get weed seeds uh, germinating. So you'll have crabgrass popping and other weeds. So keeping it at three inches actually statistically keeps the soil cooler and thus you will have less weeds and crabgrass. Of course with the heat we've been having and the drought that's uh, ultimately inevitable uh, at this time of the year as we go into August and of course there's treatments for that. So hopefully that answers that question sufficiently and uh, Allison and thank you for sending that to me. Uh, the second question is Steve says hey I have three dogs and a cat uh, what can I do about crabgrass now? Well, in the springtime, there's a pre-emergent that we can put down that keeps the crabgrass and annual weeds from uh, germinating. At this time of the year, uh, it's a post-emergent. And what that means is the plant's already there. So it seems that you already have some crabgrass there, and we do have a spray for that that's quite effective. And the reason you'd want to use that is every plant puts out hundreds and thousands of seeds, and it just increases the crabgrass seed bank. Uh, year after year, and that's how people lose their lawn uh, over time. Uh, the product that we have uh, is a liquid formulation. Um, it is safe for cats and dogs once dry, people, pets, everything. I uh, use it on my own lawn, and it's a spray that you can do on the entire lawn, or if you just have some along the edges of the driveway or other hot spots, we can just uh, treat for crabgrass in that way. So there's, there's a very good product for that, um, and if you're interested, just just hit me up on an email. I'll be happy to give you a, uh, an estimate on that if you're interested in more information. So thank you, Steve. Nancy. Okay, Nancy, hopefully you're out there listening. Um, I have about 30 plus tree sprouts. That's exciting. From a birch and a crabapple tree that were cut down several years ago, even after mowing. Okay. This is kind of a off and on off topic. Um, what you've got is you've got sprouts coming up from the stumps and you really would want to have those stumps ground out with a stump grinder so that you don't keep these uh, tree sprouts. That's going to be your best bet to eliminate um, because the, the uh, reserves and the energy of these trees that were cut down in the past are still there and it's trying to 
put up, you know, new sprouts. So like you said, mowing, they just pop right back up again. So in order to eliminate fully um, these sprouts coming out from these old stumps, they should be uh, browned down and then that lawn area reseeded. So that's the, that's the fix to that. So uh, thank you, Nancy, for that. Let's see, moving right along. Linda says, um, just received an uh, email about the webinar, which obviously we're doing, uh, and you saw that we do tick control. Yes, we do. You don't have a lawn, but you have garden and mulch areas, and um, you're, you're interested in tick control. So tick control uh, has been a really growing segment of our business, and in terms of the climate and things warming up and all kinds of tick-borne diseases out there. I see it's like, it seems like every year there's a new disease that's popping up that was out West or down South. And it's now, you know, here in New England, Vermont, uh, New Hampshire area. So we do a lot of tick control um, and we can treat mulch areas. We can treat ornamentals, lawn areas. We can treat in uh, forested uh, areas, undergrowth, uh, as far as that goes, where, where ticks are more, uh, prevalent and you want to create a barrier around your house and we generally do that in a, a monthly basis uh, primarily spring and the fall when ticks are the most active but you can spray for them uh, anytime we have three different products that we have available uh, for our use depending upon situations such as uh, the Sunapi watershed area is an area that we have a lot of uh, clientele, a lot of folks, of course, enjoying the outdoors, uh, beautiful summer, wonderful houses, but ticks, not so much fun. Uh, and so we have very specific products that we can use in the watershed area, which basically means uh, Sunapi is a public drinking water supply. And we're the only uh, company that's licensed to treat ticks in that area, for instance. So we have three products, uh, organic, one that's a, a low key standard product and then our, our standard uh, product. So if you're interested in any more information on that, uh, Linda, just uh, email me uh, and I'll be happy to uh, be able to give you more uh, information on that. That's an excellent question, excellent question. Mary says, how often should you water your lawn in the heat of the summer? Oh boy. There's, there's, a, there's a loaded question right there. I'll tell you what, especially with watering bands and how hot it's been. So in the beginning of the year, uh, when things get hot and dry, like say in June, uh, generally you wanna try to give the lawn an inch of water a, a week. Uh, and that usually is best done in the morning for about, it depends upon your lawn and the exposure, but generally a 20 to 30 minutes every other day it's better to water infrequently to promote deeper roots into the, into the uh, soil. If you do a five minute spritz, you're gonna, you're gonna promote a shallow root system, which actually is putting your lawn at a disadvantage because it's gonna dry out quicker. The deeper the roots, obviously it's gonna have access to more moisture and it's gonna be healthier uh, coming into the summer months like July. <clears throat> Speaking of July, this July uh, statistically has been the third hottest on record since the late 1800s. So, uh, I hope you've been enjoying the beach weather, but I'll tell you what, the lawns do not like the weather in the 90s. So in the summer, when it's really, really hot, any amount of water when we're in a drought, if you're able to and not on a band, would be to water once a week for like a half an hour and keep the crowns, which is the, the base of the plant, uh, alive. Um, if if it, we get into two to three weeks of no rain, you see what's been happening out there on some of my blog posts. If you go to chippersinc.com, you can see the, the areas that turn not just tan, but they actually turn black from the high 90s in the humidities. And those, those plants may or may not recover. You won't know fully until uh, September. So watering is, uh, is, is important, um, but again, most folks don't have irrigation systems and don't water. We also have a, a Q&A that is uh, available on the webinar right now and you can actually type me a question um, and uh, hopefully I can figure out how to uh, answer it <laughs> online right now live. So if you've got a question you want follow up to anything I've been talking about, just uh, go ahead and type it and we'll, uh, we'll keep going. So thank you, Mary, for that uh, question. Uh, Christy uh, is asking, I'm just cutting the crabgrass that grew after my lawn died from the drought. Will my lawn come back in the spring? Yeah, you're not alone, uh, Christy, in that um, the drought 
uh, and the crabgrass, uh, as I mentioned earlier, will, will sprout when the soil gets hot and when your normal cool season grass, which really appreciates the 70s and 80s, um, not the 90s, uh, goes dormant. So the long, the short answer actually to that question is uh, this fall, if the lawn doesn't come back by you know, you know, September, you'd want to probably think about doing some remedial uh, repair uh, loaming and seeding, or a, a big, uh, a big thing that we do in the fall is aeration and overseeding, which allows you to repair damaged lawns and replace it with better grasses, such as better drought tolerant grasses, or shade grasses, or sunny grasses. In other words, what was what was there? So you won't really know until we get into September how much uh, we get some rainfall, how much is recovered. Um, in terms of next spring, that's a long ways away. You could get winter damage and kill. So I wouldn't be thinking spring, I'd be thinking this fall. So if you do have uh, that kind of a damaged area, and if it's not uh, recovered by uh, you know September, think about doing some repair work because seeding in the fall works far, far better than the springtime because crabgrass is coming to an end. It's an annual frost will kill it. And again, as I said earlier, we can spray for crabgrass and knock those plants down and give the lawn a, a cleaner look and also keep the weeds and crabgrass seeds from, from um, putting out new seeds and increasing crabgrass in the future. And that way next spring, you can hopefully get some crabgrass control uh, and the lawn will look uh, better. So thank you for that question, Christy. Jill asks, tell me more about your new mosquito and black fly treatments. Well, um, the only thing that I can say is that we are now officially licensed as a company to treat for uh, mosquitoes along with our uh, tick uh, control uh, division. And we will be doing that in the future, not this year. Um, we're still working on the logistics of pricing and what we're gonna do and so forth, but that will be a service we're gonna be offered uh, next year in 2021. Uh, we've had lots of clients asking uh, for this service and so we have definitely listened. And I'm really happy that we're going to be able to provide this uh, to our client base um, as it becomes an increasing issue, uh, mosquitoes along with uh, ticks. So look for more information over the winter. Uh, and of course, as we get more information, I'll be glad to provide it as it becomes available. So thank you very much. So I guess we have some, uh, we're going to take a pause on the, the written. We're going to check out uh, Nancy. Uh, the tree sprouts are coming up all over the lawn as far away as 30 feet. The stumps have already been ground down and have been reseeded. Okay, Nancy, that's, uh, that's interesting. In order for me to be able to answer that a bit better, I'd actually, I'd actually want to look at the situation. And there's our herbicides that we have that we can uh, treat uh, those, uh, those sprouts with. So again, in order to answer that completely, fully, uh, I'd be happy to take a look at it myself and uh, give you more information. And if you want to uh, uh, have me do that, just email me and I'd be happy to contact you directly. So thank you for that. Jeff says, thanks for hosting Theron. Uh, where can I obtain good soil test and what is the cost in such? Uh, Jeff, in order to answer that question, I'd need to know your town. Um, as I have different vendors, we go all the way from Randolph, Vermont down to Bow, New Hampshire, all the way up to Lake Winnipesaukee. So there's certainly a, a ton of vendors in that area. And I must add that that's really a great question because there's really good soil and then there's dirt. And uh, <laughs> dirt is not what you want to use on a lawn. And I, I say that tongue in cheek, but the quality and the blend of the soil uh, that you get for repairs is extremely important. Uh, I can't tell you how many lawns I've gone onto that have been uh, newly installed with, with loam <laughs> and it's, it's gravel. And, uh, and I have to start with that <laughs> with new clients. So uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So if you provide that, uh, you can email me or, or if you get to me at the end, I'd be happy to give you some, uh, some vendors that, uh, that uh, are reputable and, and have good, good uh, topsoil and loam. Um, this is just a reminder that um, we're gonna do these webinars um, every week on Thursdays at 9 a.m. Um, and you're already enrolled if you're here, of course, and you should receive a one hour uh, heads up reminder so you don't forget. Of course, I get one too, so I don't forget because obviously if I'm not here, 
that's going to be a problem. You're just going to get whiteboard. Um, please um, share the link with your friends and your neighbors. Um, this is not a sales tool at all. This is meant to be an educational forum. Uh, and I want to relay, you know, the 35, 33 years experience I've had in the field to all of you. Um, there's a lot of people that do lawns and then there's people that really know about lawns and I'm it. I am the Mr. Grass. Um, and so I'm here for you. Uh, I love educating people and solving problems. That's why I, I really enjoy my job here at Chippers. And um, I, I get to go outside every day and solve problems and then see the, the good work that, that we all do. And uh, I'm happy to provide freely information about lawns in, uh, in general. And I, I really do thank you all um, for coming. I am out of questions, so I think I have a little bit of time left. I just want to give a, a brief overview of what's going on out there right now in, in the field. We've had it extremely hot and dry, uh, June and July, as I've mentioned. A lot of the lawns have sustained permanent damage. Generally, these are in hot spots, areas that have buried uh, ledge, sandy areas, slopes, um, minimal topsoil. In other words, the lawn only has it maybe an inch of topsoil, and then underneath that, it's sand. So generally speaking, all lawns have a hot spot, and these are the areas that dried out the quickest, went dormant, turned tan, brown, and then black. Um, we have had some cooler weather of late. We have had some rain. Uh, some of the lawns have responded and are in a recovery mode right now, but there still is a lot of damage going on um, out there. So again, think about repairs and doing something in the near future. You know, the Labor Day, the end of August, September, October is when you want to do repairs to your lawn. Do not wait until next spring because next spring the soil is cold and you're gonna to have to battle crabgrass and annual weeds in the, uh, the springtime. All of the weeds are dying in the fall and that's the best time with warm soil to do repair work. Um, so that's what's going on out there right now. If you don't need to cut your lawn, don't do it. I haven't cut my lawn in three weeks. If, it, if I got areas that are like not even growing, the, the grass is just standing, and then I got shaded areas, I got more moisture, the grass is probably four or five inches high, don't worry about it. When you cut that turf, especially in the heat, all of that moisture goes out the end of the leaf blade, and then the root system is trying to replace that moisture and put up new sprouts, and it just dries out. And you can literally brown your lawn out overnight, especially if you cut at high noon or have a mowing company that cuts uh, the lawn too short or in the middle of the day. So right now it's a light touch. Don't mow if you don't absolutely have to. You're going to do more damage um, than not. So. That's kind of the state of affairs right now. We're treating for crabgrass right now uh, to keep lawns clean again and to uh, keep them from the crabgrass plants from putting up more seed uh, for the future. Um, and we're doing a lot of uh, tick sprays still and uh, that's kind of what's, uh, what's going on uh, in terms of that. Um, as a reminder, um, if you do have questions, my email is turf, it's behind me, turf at chippersinc.com. Send me uh, questions directly or you can submit them um, now that you're signed up. And again, please uh, spread the word with your friends. We're hoping to uh, grow this, uh, no pun intended, uh, to many, many people and, and get the word out uh, because we really want to try to educate folks and lawns can be very frustrating and with our short growing season, um, with our short growing season, we're not gonna be able to do as much as say if you live down south. And um, I got in one more question here. Uh, Jill says, is fall a good time to treat for ticks? Yes, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned uh, briefly, I'll expand on it. Spring and the fall is when adult ticks are the most active. Um, they're out seeking a blood meal. Uh, in the March, April, May uh, timeframe, as well as the October, November timeframe. So if uh, you do have a tick problem, uh, having a tick spray to knock down the adult population this fall is a great idea versus waiting uh, for next spring. And though that is the best timeframe uh, to treat for ticks. Although again, any time is, uh, is better than <laughs> no time. Uh, but certainly spring and the fall are, is the, the Christmas time uh, for killing these uh, little varmints because I don't know any good ticks uh, at all. So uh, thank you for that um, 
question, uh, Jill. I think our time has come to an end and it's been a lot of fun. 9.20, I figured about 20 minutes or so, uh, unless anybody else has any more questions. Uh, right now, I think we're gonna, we're gonna call it a wrap. I really do thank you uh, for joining me. Um, this has been unique. I've done Zoom meetings, but not to the general public before, so it's kind of uh, unique. And um, hopefully you learned uh, some stuff today. And again, I'm, I'm available as a resource at no charge, uh, complimentary evaluations for properties. And um, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll look me up and maybe I can meet you in person. That would be fun, definitely. So uh, thank you again. Uh, I'm Theron Peck, Mr. Grass, and we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you very much. And please have a good week.